Well, welcome back to The Pew, everybody. I am your host, John Edwards, and here to the left of me, as always, is my right. co-host and cohort, Victor Adams. Yeah, it's good to be here, man. I mean, you know, I know it's it's like, I feel like I feel like it's been like weeks. It like, has been, yeah, man. Yeah. It's, it's funny because we usually record on Monday afternoons, and this is a right. Saturday morning, so yeah. if we just look like we both woke up, then forgive us, people, because we did. Yeah, I did <laughs> wash my face, so yeah, this That's morning. right. Yeah. I feel like I have 40 pounds of weight under mm-hmm. my eyes right now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's been a busy few weeks, man. We've been on the road traveling, and, uh, you know, I was blessed to to go on the Chris Stefanik show. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, a couple of those. I think we did two of his TV shows and one of his podcasts. It was great getting to go to Denver. It's a place I love, you know, I'm a big Denver Broncos fan. And so it's the second time I've been out there and, and got to spend time with Chris at his house and recording and going to dinner. And he's just such an awesome guy and become a good friend. And so I'm thankful to Chris for that. Uh, we also went to Tucson. And I uh, spoke to a goddess group out there. So it's just been uh, some crazy travel. Mm-hmm. And we got some cool stuff coming up. You know, I, I got a call from uh, Father Dave Pavanka, uh, his people from Franciscan. They want me to come up there and be a part of his Wild Goose series, the the, the next season of yeah. that. So we're going to go do that in December. So a lot of great things going on, Victor. And to your point, yeah, it's it's. I think the last episode we did, I had Max in here. Um, I think you were busy. Uh, and I had something going on, and we mm-hmm. needed to get an episode because that's the other thing I did. Right. We went on fall break with the family, so we got to go to the mountains and uh, in the Ozarks and spend time with the family, and it was a great time. But uh, that was one of the reasons I had Max on because I needed to get an episode ready uh, before we left. So you're right; it's been a, been a few weeks, and it's been yeah. a lot of stuff happening in between. But it's all good stuff, and uh, just you know, Victor, I'm excited to jump back in here on a couple of different topics. We're going to film two shows today, and. And uh, the first one is something that I, you know, I, I remember speaking about to you a couple of weeks in a row. Like, I, when we get back in there, I want to talk about this. Mm-hmm. And, and so we'll jump into that in a minute. Uh, before we get started, though, I really just want to, again, invite people into supporting our ministry. You know, the biggest need that we have right now in the ministry is the need for mission partners, people that want to partner in this ministry. And, you know, for so long, I've said, like, this isn't my ministry or Victor's ministry. First of all, it's God's. And after that, it's yours, too. Uh, You know, you're listening to the show. You're buying the merchandise. You're coming to speaking events. You know, you send emails in and text all the time about how much this has meant to you. And it's so I'm so thankful for all of that. But, you know, I really have always wanted everybody listening or watching this to feel like this is their ministry. And, you know, so many of us in our life, we look for opportunities to serve others or we want to evangelize and we simply don't know how. Right. Or or maybe we don't have the gifting to do it in the way that we wish we did, you know, could. Well, this is why I tell people all the time that being a part of this ministry, you can use this ministry to minister to others. Right. You can share the podcast with people. You could share the YouTube videos. And we ask that you do. But one of the greatest ways you could really help is through financially supporting us. Right. I mean, when I look at where revenue comes into the ministry, which keeps it going and supports it, uh, most of it comes from my traveling and speaking. Uh, We don't have a lot of monthly donors right now. We have some people in the community, and thank God for that, that are paying to be a part of our community and and to have monthly calls and all that stuff. But uh, we're looking to grow our mission partners, people that want to give monthly, whether that's, you know, $10, $25, $100, you know, $500, whatever it is. You know, we accept all of it graciously, but it's something that's very needed. And, you know, I don't like to talk to people about giving us money because that's not what it's about. I'm inviting you into an opportunity to be a part of something that helps a lot of people. And through your financial support, it allows us to continue to do that because we don't want to just stay where we are. We want to continue to grow, right? I want to bring on other people like maybe even hiring Victor full time if that's something that he discerns with God to go out on the road and and to help implement these men's groups that we're starting all over the country. And I wish I had time right now to read you the letters of DREs and deacons and priests and and men that have started these groups and the, the difference that it's making in their parish and in their lives. And that's really what this ministry is about. So if you're looking for something in your life to give to, and look, I know a lot of people give to a lot of things already. So I'm not asking you to overextend yourself. I'm just asking you to consider giving to this because you're really helping a lot of things at once. You know, if, if you're really into supporting pro-life, which we all should be, then you're doing that by helping men grow into virtuous men so that maybe they're raising up future virtuous men that aren't laying down with women before they're married, right? If you're into helping the needy and the poor, um, part of what we, we, we teach our groups that we start and implement around the country is they have a service night. And a lot of nights like we do, Victor, we, we go out, we make sandwiches for, for, the, for the needy and for the hungry. 
we've gone to Catholic charities and, and you know, packed seven pallets of, of food for needy families. We've gone to elderly homes and, and spent time with people that have no one to spend time with them. So when you're helping just to get on the pew in this ministry, you're not only, it's, it's not just to support John, it's to support all these other men out there that need help, right? That, that need places to go and, and to find what Victor and I have found, a group of men to do life with and, 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 and a newfound life in Christ through that. And so I just, I'm spending this time before every podcast because I want to be honest with you. We need support. We need funding. We need that to continue to grow and go where God is calling us to go. So I just humbly put my hat in my hand, literally, and just ask, you know, if, if this podcast has done anything for you, consider becoming a mission partner with us at whatever level you can. Uh, you could do that by going to donorbox.org slash pew. You can go to our website, just go on the pew and click donate there. It'll take you to the same place. But there you could choose a monthly amount to give. And just know that when you do, that it's going to go to support all the things I've talked about, but it's going to keep this ministry going so that we can continue to do the work that God's called us to do. We're just getting started. There's so much work to be done. There's so many parishes that don't have groups. There's so many men out there that are lost and broken, and we want to spend time helping with that. So I just thank you for those that give already. I thank you for those in the community, and I thank you for those that will consider giving in the future. So one last thing I do want to mention, because I talked to Father Larry yesterday, our pilgrimage is rapidly approaching. I know it's October, but it'll be May of 2023 before you know it. And this is going to be an incredible trip. There's so many people I know that have signed up. There's so many people that I'm looking forward to go with this, and that includes you. I'd love to take you to the Holy Land with my wife and with Father Larry and all the other people that are going to go and walk in the footsteps of Jesus to really experience firsthand the places we've read about in scriptures for years, right? The places that we've imagined in our, in our minds, what they look like and, and what they feel like. Well, you can really understand that now. You can join us and go, and it's going to be the trip of a lifetime. Father Larry's awesome. He's going to be doing masses at all the holy sites. I'm going to be giving talks. He's going to give some talks too. But more importantly, we're going to be walking the footsteps of Christ, and we're going to experience where he was and how he lived, and it's going to be awesome. And I invite you, your family, your loved ones, anyone you care about, anyone you think should go, join us. Go to our website. Go to the Events and Book Me page. In the middle of that, you'll see the pilgrimage piece. Click that. You can fill out the forms. You can find out all the information. Again, the um, the vaccine mandates have been dropped in Israel. So if you're not you know vaccinated, it doesn't matter. You can still come. Either way, just join us and go on a trip that you will not soon forget, I promise. So, Victor, all that out of the way, um, and thank you for everybody for listening to that. I know sometimes it gets long in the beginning, but this is our best opportunity to ask people to support what we do and to let them know what we have going on. So, Victor, this week, I really, you know, like I said, I spent a lot of time on planes. Mm -hmm. And one day last week, we had the gospel reading where Jesus, actually the whole week, Jesus was kind of railing on the Pharisees, right? You hypocrites. Yeah, you they hypocrites, had a tough hypocrites. time, didn't they? Yeah. It's like, man, I just want to come and listen, man. Why are you always yeah. got to get on me? Yeah. And what makes me laugh is that, what you right. just said, where they're like, why are you being so mean? It's <laughs> like right, yeah. all you did was try to trap right. him, trick him, and kill him, yeah. and like stone him and get people to turn against him. And then when he turns a little bit back at you, you get upset. Right. <laughs> but, but that was part of, of what was wrong with the Pharisees, right? They were hypocrites. They they spent all this time projecting this image of being super holy and super pious and doing everything the way that they had asked everyone else to right. live. But Jesus calls them out again and again for saying, like, yeah, you're saying all this, but you're not living it. And he even tells the people, do what they preach to you, what they teach mm -hmm. you, but don't do what they do. Well, yeah, well, you know, Jesus stole their spotlight. Yeah. They're a little upset about that, you know. Yeah, yeah they yeah. were jealous for yeah, sure. Right. But I, I was on a plane and I was reading that, and it really just Matthew 23, 25 through 27. Mm -hmm which is where he says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you cleanse the outside of the cup and of the plate, but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. You blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup so that the outside may also become clean. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs on which the outside looks beautiful, but inside they are full of the bones of the dead and all kinds of filth. So you also on the outside look righteous to others, but inside you're full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. So, you know, I've read that a million times, and it always catches my attention that Jesus is pointing to, like, stop worrying so much about projecting something mm -hmm. and become that something, right? Become that something. And, and as I was on the plane, you know, I thought about you and I sitting out here a couple of weeks ago, and we were watching football on a Saturday, college football, and having a, you know, drink, having a cigar or whatever, and I remember I got up to go inside to grab another drink, a beer or something. 
And as I did, I walked by this flat screen TV we have out there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's so amazing, the 4K and the cameras and the images now. Like, when you're sitting far away or you're sitting a distance from the TV, you could see literally like a mole on somebody's face 20 yards behind the people on the sideline, right? Mm -hmm. You can see like the, the individual hairs on their head. And it's a beautiful projected picture. You're just going, wow, what an amazing shot. I remember being a kid and watching TV, and it was so fuzzy you could barely see anything. Right, yeah. But now, like I said, you could pick somebody's nose hairs out from 30 yards back in the stands. But as I walked in to get this beer, like, you know, I'm six foot eight, so where the TV was hanging, I was continuing to watch the game as I walked by. And the, as I got up close to it, like, it was about this far from, you know, maybe a less than a foot from the TV, I started to notice, like, man, it was so blurry. Like, it was worse than it was when I was a kid. Like, all of a sudden, it was this individual pixels mm -hmm. that made up this messy picture. And I just remember thinking as I walked in the house, because I'm always trying to be open to what God's putting in front of me and if there's a message in it to share with others or or really for myself, what he's trying to say for me or to me. I remember thinking, man, like, man, isn't that like what we're like? You know, we spend all this time trying to project this beautiful picture to keep people at a distance, right? Mm -hmm. Like if they're far enough away from me, if I don't let people get close and they see the perfect John or the perfect Victor or the perfect Angela, by the way, my wife's in here working the camera today. So thank you for that, Angela. But we, we spend so much time trying to project all this, worried about what our boss thinks, what our, what our parents think, what our friends think, what people honestly, more importantly than any of them are where we spend most of our time worrying about what people we don't even know think of us. And really we're, we're just a bunch of messy pixels and dots inside, mm -hmm. right? And this is what Jesus was saying to the Pharisees, was he's like, you're spending so much time trying to shine up and polish up. Uh, there's a saying about that, but I don't want to say yeah. it because it's kind of rude, but like polish up a, a piece of dung is what I'll yeah, say right. and make it look nice, but it's it, inside it's still a piece of dung. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying that we're not, we're, we're terrible people. I'm just saying we spend so much of our time and effort on the wrong things of trying to project that we're something that we're not instead of being something that we're called to be. Mm -hmm. Well, have you ever like, for instance, you know, reached for like a glass or something that you haven't used for a long time, you know, like a wine glass or margarita glass, you know, something yeah. that's like been on the shelf for display for many, you know, months. I drink a lot of water, Victor. Right. I do water glasses. Well, <laughs> then, this, then you won't understand what I'm saying. Then. <laughs> but, but anyways, you bring it down and you're about to, you know, pour something in it, but you realize it's just like dust or, Maybe there's a dead gnat in there, you know? Oh, yeah. But, yeah so, so you look at it going, you know, and, and outside it's, for some reason, the surface is clean because the angle is where dust won't do, but inside yeah. it all settles. And that's what Christ is saying, obviously. You know, for if we, anyone reads it, understands what that message is, is that, is that yeah, we can wash, you know, our, you know, groom ourselves, make us smell really nice, buy the nicest clothes, project an image for five minutes to each person we meet, just enough time where they don't ask enough personal questions or, or the vulnerability is there. Yeah. But yet internally, our our Lord, our our Father, you know, knows exactly that you're a pretender. Yeah. You know, I still love you, even though you're pretending to this life. Um, and and He's calling us to kind of be more more revealing of ourselves to others. Yeah. Saying, you know, I am not. I am not who I say I am. Right. And and by by helping others, you know, as well. Like if people are struggling with something, don't go, well, you know, I'm sorry for that person, but thank God it's not happening to me. Sure. Instead of, you know, we need to stop thinking that way. We need to say, what can I do to help this person? You know? Yeah, and, and that's the thing. Like it can lead us to duplicity. Right. If we're not careful where we're living, you know, dual lives and we're this person here and that person here. And I mean, this resonates with a lot of men because I share this in a lot of the talks that I give is, you know, I'll say, aren't you tired of being like this guy at the bar and this guy at church and this guy at work and this guy with this group of friends and this mm -hmm. guy with this group of friends? And it's exhausting. And, you know, we sit there and, and, and we complain about how stressed out and how tired and how worn out we are and physically drained all the time. Think about how much of our energy and where that drain is coming from is projecting this, this facade right. to people of who we want them to see us as instead of actually working on looking like like becoming like that if you want to be like that then work to be like that mm -hmm. you know i think so often of and it's funny because my mom would probably you know be red in the face for me telling this you know god rest her soul but i remember being like in our kitchen and running around and doing a bunch of stuff that we weren't supposed to chasing my sister with a broom or something because mm -hmm. she was older and held me down was slapping me in the face or yeah. something and my mom was on the phone right and or, or or you know was telling us to stop and then the phone rang Mm -hmm. And, that you know, she'd be like, stop it right now. Stop it. I'm going to tell your father and he's going to come home and take care of this. And, yeah. You know, and, and, and all this, I mean, just, just angry and upset and stressed. And the phone would ring. It's like, ring. 
hello. Yeah, you know, right. <laughs> you hear this like, wait a minute. Like I remember stopping in my tracks and going, you were just literally yelling and mad and angry. And, and right. then the phone rang and you're, oh, hello. oh yes, everything's wonderful. How are yeah. you? You know, and I've seen Angela do that. I've done that. I, it's just, it's a natural thing of like, oh, tighten up. Somebody's looking. Mm-hmm. Right. And Angela calls me about it all the time when I'm not the person I should be. Right. And, and then you'll come over or somebody else. And then the attitude com- completely changes. And she's like, I wish you spent as much time like being the person that you're projecting everybody else that you are with us. Mm-hmm. Because you just flipped the switch. And even one time I remember the kids calling me out about it. I was literally yelling at them because stuff they were doing in the car. And then the phone rang and it was somebody. And, you know, and I just completely flipped that switch. And, and Angela even said something to me about it. She's like, really? Like, you you completely just, you know, like, you're a chameleon, man. Like, you just changed your color right then. And then you hung up the phone and you're back to being angry at everybody. Mm-hmm. And and so this is something that I think we spend so much time and effort on and we waste so much of that energy and, you know, we spend so much time trying to control what everybody perceives us as is just stopping to worry about that. Because in the end, Victor, I mean, we've said this a billion times and we'll say it again a bunch of times in this episode is the only opinion that matters is God's. Right. And I didn't understand that for a long time in my life. You know, with my drug addictions and all those things, dude, the most exhausting thing to me was trying to keep up appearances. You know, I was eight to five. I was Johnny on the spot. You know, I was going to work and, and I was doing everything I needed to do. I was hitting all my numbers and, and making all my sales calls and making the company all this money. I was making all this money. But, dude, it was so exhausting because I was living this other life. And and I was always so worried that people were going to find out or I was going to slip up or I was going to mess up. And I had to project this perfect image that I had it all together. And it literally almost destroyed me, man, mm-hmm. because – to deal with the stress that kept growing all the time of trying to keep up a, a, a bigger and bigger facade, then I drove myself into more and more cocaine, more and more alcohol, more and more cigarettes, more and more porn, because it's, we're not meant to carry all of that. We're supposed to simply be who we are, but we can't figure out who we are if we don't start to ask God who we are and start to trust that, that yeah, we are a mess of pixels and, and, and pictures and dots, but that's exactly what makes up the, the perfect picture that God sees in us, right? Like he sees, I, yes, I know right now, like looking down from the cross, I see the dots and the mess of your life, but I also see what you can become, that mm-hmm. perfect image that is perfect to me, not to them, right? Because perfect to the world means a whole lot of different things than it does right. to God, right? It means keeping up with the Joneses. It means wearing the latest fashions, being hip to the latest slang, you know, waste, completely diverging yourself and giving into the world, right? And what it wants of you, which is completely opposite of what God sees as perfect. But so many of us are spending that time and just from a place of, of pain still in my life of, of, of that stress and, and what it caused and how it almost broke me and broke my family and everything that was important to me. I, I just, I know the danger of this, but I see it everywhere. And, and the thing is like, this is the crazy part, Victor, is we all know that when you get close to that TV, it's a, it's a mess of dots, mm-hmm. right? We all know that that image that you're seeing from afar is not really what it looks like up close, but yet we all continue to try to, to try to project this, even with that knowledge that Victor, I know you're a mess of dots, you know, I'm a mess of dots, but yet we go, okay, I know it, you know it, but we're not going to know it. We're going to be perfect. And it, it's, it's just ridiculous when you stop and actually pull yourself back from it and look at it and go, why am I doing that? Why? Because someone else tells me I need to? Because somebody else thinks I need to act and live this way for them to like me? Who cares? Mm-hmm. And the end of it, like, what, like, what if we took all that time and energy and quit trying to hide our problems and our brokenness and turn that energy and actually try to work on it? Right, started trying to pick these dots and go, okay, what is this one? Right, what's screwed up with this? What is this in my life that's broken? And how can I ask God to come into that moment and fix it? What needs healing here? What wound caused this? And really start to deal with those things and turn that energy back to where it's supposed to be focused on, which is looking interiorly instead of worrying about what it looks like out there. Right. I think we kind of get our signals crossed between self awareness and self um, preservation. Yeah. I think we, we, we try to preserve our image far too long to where we're using duct tape to keep it up, you know, and, and self-awareness is our true 
identity. Even though we're, we know we're a mess, we're working on it. You know, we, we know that there's things that we're struggling with, things we're not attentive as to, to like where it's the relationships or, or things that we're struggling with due to trauma. You know, I mean, yeah. we, we, like, we talked about wounds a long time ago, another you know, thing that, I mean, we, we're, we're, we're carrying wounds all the time. And, and we may not know what, how that wound affects our relationships. And, and I think when we're, when we try to hide that wound, it's eventually going to be revealed yeah. in one way or the form. And, th- and that's kind of like the blurriness of our self identity or self awareness is that we don't realize that some things are causing us to be different than what we actually want to be in a good aspect of it. Sure. You know? Um, and, and you know, when we have an image of ourselves, it's always different from what other people may be. Oh, yeah. Us, yeah. Um, and like, like I said, it's one of those things where, where you just talked about is that um, when we promote ourselves the way we want to be promoted, as if we're trying to, to be something that we know we're not, you know, it's exhausting. Yeah. And, and obviously we're not listening to the correct voice. Yeah. We listen to our internal voice, which is always kind of going to be uh, what is not going to be the, the best voice to listen to yeah. because it's, you know, it's a jumble mess of messages, but you know, like David sent us, remember David sent us this um, thing in our, our group or men's group about this guy who was talking about, you know, you have to listen to the voice, the real yeah. voice to get you where you need to get to, which is heaven. Yeah. Um, and I want to go too far into that because you know, that'd be been another time we talked another about episode, more depth, yeah, another episode. Yeah. but, but it's so profound is that we have to make sure whose voice are we listening to? Yeah. You know, we listen to our own need to self preservation or do we need to be more, um, self-aware no you make a great point there and i mean it's backed up by a quote i had from saint Teresa of calcutta mother Teresa, to those Mm -hmm. that may not be familiar to her being called saint Teresa of calcutta but um she says never bother about people's opinions be obedient to truth for with humble obedience you will never be disturbed and it's exactly what you're talking about like to be obedient we have to have a voice to be obedient to Mm -hmm. So much, so many of us are spending time being obedient to the wrong voice. Right. Is your is your point? We're listening to the world and what it thinks, and we're trying to keep up with the Joneses, trying to keep up appearances, and all of those things that don't matter. Because I just, I have to believe that, like, if 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 we have the grace of of, of a deathbed moment, I don't think we're going to sit back and look and go, man, I really wish that like I had projected myself more falsely than I did, yeah. or I really wish that I had changed myself to impress these people we're probably going to be looking back on our life going, why did I spend so much time worried about all that? You know, because I could have spent that time being a better husband, a better mm-hmm. father, a better friend. You know, um, I, I could have spent that time working on here because Victor, you know, I, was, I talked to this to guys about this to guys all the time too, is guys, we naturally want to go out there and grab our broadsword and whack something out there. Right. Cause it's just easier than dealing with the stuff in here. That's why X throwing so fun, right? Yeah, that's yeah. right. It's like, <laughs> I'm going to go out there and, and because it means that I don't have to deal with the junk yeah, in here. Right. And that's really what God wants us to spend our entire life doing is saying like, what is wrong in me? What are all these messy pixels, if you will, that need healing, that need fixing, that need broken. And, and that's what I really want people to get out of this is just starting to think about like what, instead of trying to project this perfect image that we have it all together, like we need to be concerned about projecting the image of the perfect man. Yeah. Right, which was Jesus Christ, not the perfect man of who I think John should be or somebody else should be, but the perfect image of who God wants us to be, who He knows we can be, and who He's given us the gifts to become. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing. There is is to focus on that every day. Like every time you feel yourself going, "What? What is? Why am I worried about that right. person? What am I doing right now? Yeah, yeah why, why am I doing this? Like, yeah. how yeah. can I be more of who Jesus wants me to be in this moment? Right." Right? What, what is he asking of me? What is it that irked me about something that I felt like I had to change myself for this person that's here now? What is it inside me that I don't like about myself that made me flip the switch and become Johnny on the spot over here? Mm-hmm. Because whatever that is, there's something there that I don't, I'm not happy with myself. I'm ashamed of. That's where we got to turn our attention to start saying, what's making me do this? Mm-hmm. Because I'll tell you something, man. People ask me all the time. How do you get up there and continue to just get up there and pour your life out like that? Dude, next week, Coming in Eyes is coming here for three days or two and a half days to film me, my wife, my kids, and I'm going to pour out my, my soul about my struggle with pornography. I, I've talked about that some, but not a lot. And that's going to go out to thousands or millions of people around the world because they, their software and everything's all over the place. And people ask me, they're like, what, are, aren't you terrified of that? And yes, I am if I allow myself to think about all that. But what I think of is like, man, when, when when you get to the place in your life where the only opinion that really matters is God's, mm-hmm. where you start looking at that eternal 
ramification of your life instead of that momentary ramification of what this person thinks or if I lose this friends group or whatever, you start to find a freedom that all of us long for in our life. You know, I'm a lot of things and, and I'm still broken in a lot of ways. But one thing I'm ba- thankful for is that the Lord is, has convinced me that like, yeah, you were that before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you were broken. Chris told me on his show and it really, Angel and I watched it last night together and it really almost made me cry. He looked across the table at me. He said, dude, the guy you're describing is not the, the redeemed John Edwards I know. Mm-hmm. It's not the person that sits in front of me today. He says, it just blows my mind when I hear you tell this story and I see this image of this other man and you're nowhere near that mm-hmm. now. And it's only by the grace of God, dude. I'm not trying to sit here and pridefully talk about myself, sure. but there's a freedom that comes with that. That's like, yeah, that's not who I am anymore. Mm. And I don't have to pretend to be anything else. I, yeah, I did a lot of coke. Yeah, I almost ruined my family. Yes, I went to jail. Yes, I struggled with porn. I did, but that's not who I am anymore. And that comes from an understanding that God loves me unconditionally and that that's all that matters. And, and so for people out there listening today, I want them to start understanding it's difficult, right? It's difficult. You have to go through a lot of healing. You have to admit a lot of brokenness. You have to become super vulnerable, right? Again, that doesn't mean get on a prayed float and yell out your sins to everybody in town, but to become honest with yourself, with God and with other people and, and understand that that's what matters. Like God's putting people in your life to surround you with that matter. Mm-hmm. Himself, first and foremost, his son and the Holy Spirit, so three people in one. But then also, there's unique people in your life that he puts there that are going to be with you no matter what. And that comes from being open and vulnerable. But we have to put our focus on not trying to be like this flat screen TV anymore that's taking a bunch of mess and trying to project this beautiful image, but trying to take those mess of those mm-hmm. dots and trying to project the image that God wants of us, right? The person that we need to become. So, you know, a couple of how-tos here for those of you saying, okay, John, well, how do we do it? Well, first of all, realize those messy dots are what make you perfect in God's eyes because it means you need him, right? God loves that we need him, right? Jesus came for sinners. That's why he called Peter. That's why he called Matthew. That's why he called me, right, to ministry is is because he he knows that brokenness. Mm -hmm. And that brokenness, when it's accepted, when we become vulnerable with it, become vulnerable with it, is an invitation for him to come in. And that's what he wants us to be fully present in our lives each and every moment, each and every day. And when we allow that, our mindset changes to go, you know what? I don't care anymore about the world, about my job, about all those things. I mean, yes, I have to participate in those things, but those aren't the opinions that matter, only God's. Because at the end of my life, he's going to be the one standing there Mm -hmm. looking and saying, this is how you lived, right? So that's what matters. Stop living for the world and its opinions of you. You know, just throw that stuff out the window. I know it's hard. I know it sounds like I'm making it sound easy. It's not, but just do it. Throw it out there and go, you know what? you, you choose, you have a choice in what you think about. You have a choice in what matters to you. So start choosing in those moments. Well, this person thought this, well, I don't care. Mm-hmm. Unless you've done something really wrong and you need to apologize, right? But outside of that, this person has an opinion of me. I'm not in control of their thoughts and their opinions. That's on them. I'm going to work on who I am and I'm going to be who I am, not who they want me to be. Um, three, be okay with not being okay all the time. That's where we grow. Realize you're broken. Realize you are a mess of pixels. You are a mess of blurry dots. And that's great. God loves that and wants to be invited into it. Uh, Four, start work on your messy dots. When you start to see those things, when you rub up against something that that hurts or you realize that there's something in you that's making you project something different to someone else, pay attention to that. Concentrate on that. Take it to God and ask for his grace to start working on them. And then finally, as I said a million times this podcast, as you said, be concerned only with the opinion of God, Mm -hmm. period. Because at the end of your life, you're going to be standing in front of Jesus Christ, who's going to be sitting on the seat of judgment, and he's going to look back, and he's going to say either you were more concerned about what other people thought, right? You cleansed the cup but didn't cleanse the inside, or you were concerned about me, and you worked on you so that you could become the person and project the perfect image of me to the world. So, Victor, that's where we are this week. That's that's what's been on my heart. That's what the Lord put in our, our on this podcast this week, on that plane ride with those verses. I mean, again... When Samuel goes to call David for the Lord, when he's looking at all of Jesse's sons, he says, you know, you see as men see, but the Lord sees the heart. And that's what I want people to take away from this today, is it doesn't matter what we project to other people other than projecting Jesus Christ himself. What matters is is the place that our heart is in. Mm -hmm. And when we have our heart in the right place, that's what God sees. And our heart is the compass of our lives, right? It's how we're going to live and it's how we're going to treat others. And it's how we're going to get to be in heaven forever with the one we love the most. So, folks, you know, if you're struggling with this, 
Take a good listen to this podcast. Listen to it two or three times if you have to. Take the words to advice. Put God's opinion first in your life. Come to grips with the fact that you're a messy pixel of dots and work on per perfecting and projecting the, the image of Jesus Christ to the world. So let's take it to prayer, Victor, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, so many of us spend so much time living a facade of a life and trying our best to project that we have it all together. So much of our time and energy is wasted on worrying over how people see us and the opinions of people that won't matter in the end. Help us to look at the messy dots of our lives, not as a burden, but as an opportunity to grow into the people you desire us to be. And Father, whenever we find ourselves falling back into putting effort into keeping up appearances, remind us that the only opinion that really matters is yours. In the name of the Father, Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen.